What's going on guys, Alex here, and today I got the brand new Google Pixel 9a here with me. And if you got this phone as well and you're wondering what are some of the first things that you should do on your brand new Pixel, you came to the right video because I'm going to show you everything you need to do on your brand new phone. So let's get started with the very first one. All right guys, so the very first thing that you're gonna wanna do on your new Pixel phone is first go into your phone settings, scroll down to display and touch, and enable dark theme. This is going to turn your phone into dark mode, and this is by far the best thing that you can do for your battery because these are OLED displays and any pixels that are completely black are completely turned off. Your phone is not going to use any battery to power those pixels, and this is going to help you with longer battery life. Next, what we're gonna do is just scroll down a little bit in the display section, and we're gonna enable smooth display. By default, this is off, and this is capping your refresh rate at 60 hertz, but the Pixel 9a can go up to 120 hertz, and if you want that smooth, creamy, buttery display, definitely enable this feature. It is going to use a little bit more battery life, but hey, we put it into dark mode, so I guess they're kind of canceling each other out, right? Next, we're going to scroll back up to where it says screen timeout. And in here, you're going to want to keep it around 50 and 30 seconds because the longer your screen stays awake when you're not using it, the more battery power you're using. But one annoying thing that can happen is sometimes you're looking at a picture or you're reading a long article and your phone keeps dimming and trying to shut down on you. So what you can do instead of making your phone stay awake for a long time is enable screen attention. And now every time you use your phone, it will use the front facing camera to see that you are actively looking at the phone even though you're not interacting with it or tapping or scrolling and it will not dim and auto lock on you, allowing you to read those long articles or just look at your photos for as long as you want. Next in the display settings, we're gonna go to the lock screen and we're gonna go down to where it says always show time and info and we're gonna enable this feature because by default this is off and what that means is that we do not have an always on display. You can see when I lock my phone, it's completely black. There's no always on display, but I love my always on display. And if you want to see your always on display, all you gotta do is just enable this. And now you can see when we go back to that lock screen, we're gonna get our always on display and we can see the date, the weather, the time, and we get our fingerprint scanner, the battery percentage, and any notification icons that come through on our phone. So if you want that always on display, definitely go ahead and enable this feature. Also in the lock screen section, there's a section here that says add text on lock screen. And this is really useful if you wanna write a note on your lock screen in case you ever lose your phone, you can add your email or alternative phone number so that if anybody finds your phone, you can leave some contact information on the lock screen so that they'll know how to contact you and return your phone to you. Next, we're gonna go back into our main settings and we're gonna scroll down to battery and enable this toggle for battery percentage. And now you can see up here, we actually get the percentage of battery that's left on our phone. So this way we get a visual cue of exactly how much battery we have instead of just relying on the visual of that bar right there. All right guys, the next thing we're gonna do is make our phone faster. And the way we're gonna do that is by increasing the animation speed. So anytime you're navigating around your phone, you're interacting with it, your phone is constantly going through these animations by popping up icons on and off of your screen. And you can actually speed that up to make it seem a little bit faster. Now, I always do this on all of my phones. And to do that, we're gonna go into our settings, scroll all the way down and go to about phone and swipe down all the way to the bottom and tap on the build number a whole bunch of times until you, it asks you for your pin or password. And this will enable your developer mode. You can see it's enabled. And now when we go back to our settings page and then we go to system, down at the bottom, you'll see an option that says developer options. So we can tap into here and now we can customize a whole bunch of things about our phone. So what we're gonna do in here is hit on the search icon and look for animator duration scale. And right here, you'll see three options. We have window animation scale, transition animation scale, and animator duration scale. And they're all by default set to one X, but we're gonna tap into here and set them to 0.5 X. And what this is going to do is double the speed of our animations. So now anytime you're opening or closing apps and swiping around your phone, those animations will be twice as fast and that'll just make your phone feel faster. I do like how the animations look, but when you speed them up, it just makes using your phone feel a little bit faster. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is improve the keyboard a little bit. So this is the Google keyboard and by default, you can see it does not have a number row. So anytime you're typing and you need to switch between numbers and letters, you have to go into the secondary keyboard to get the number pad and then go back to the main keyboard to continue writing your letters. But we can improve this by adding the number row up here. And to do that, we just need to tap on the settings on our keyboard, go to preferences. And right here at the top, you can see it says number row. And when we enable this, 
when we go back to our keyboard, you're gonna see that we have our number row up here and that just makes using your keyboard much easier. You don't have to flip between the keyboards anymore if you're writing postal codes or emails that contain both numbers or letters or anything really. This just really makes the use of the keyboard much more ergonomic and easy. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is add some more space to our display. So if you want to add more icons or have space for widgets, you're definitely gonna wanna do this. I do this on all my phones. And all you need to do is long press on your home screen, go to wallpaper and style, scroll down to the bottom and go to app grid. And you can see by default, it's set to four by five, but we can set this to five by five and that's going to give us more space for widgets and icons on our home screen. So now if we go back to our home screen, you can see we get an extra row here. So if you like to populate your display with lots of widgets and icons and folders, this is definitely gonna help you be able to fit more on your home screen. And now let's actually make our wallpaper look better. So this is the default wallpaper that comes with your phone. But these days we live in the world of AI and you can use AI to create some amazing wallpapers. And to do that, you're just gonna wanna tap on your home screen again, go to wallpaper and style. Now we have a, a few default ones here that Google provides for you, but I don't really like these. So what you can do is tap more wallpapers and right here at the top, you'll see AI wallpaper. And if you go into here, we get a few templates and you can just scroll through here and play around or pick which one you like. So to show you how this works, let's just pick a random one like painting. This one looks pretty cool. And you can see when you go in here, you have a few keywords that you can tap on and change. So let's say we wanna change it from Canyon to maybe uh, let's do beach. And then instead of nothing else, we'll write hot air balloons. And then we'll change this one to let's try abstract. And now when you tap create wallpaper, it's gonna use AI to put all of those together and create you your very own unique AI wallpaper. And there you go, in just a matter of seconds, you can see the phone has generated a few different wallpapers for us based on those keywords that we selected. If you wanna change it, you can always go back into here, change whatever you want, or you can even hit inspire me and let it just come up with some random keywords for you and create some wallpapers like that. And you can see we got some very interesting looking ones with some dinosaurs and you can just keep doing this until you find something that you like. All right, so here we go. This one looks pretty nice. And when you find a wallpaper that you like, and if you want to apply it to your phone, just hit on that check mark up here. You can see what it will look like on your home screen and lock screen. And then just hit set wallpaper, apply it to your home screen and lock screen if you want. And then just tap set is going to apply it. And just like that, you can see we have created a wallpaper using the on device AI. All right, guys, next what we're gonna do is customize the shortcuts on our lock screen. So you see we have a button down here. This is for your Google smart home devices. We can even add another one over here so we can quickly take actions directly from our lock screen. And to do that, just long press on your lock screen, hit customize lock screen, authenticate into your phone. And right here, just swipe down until you see shortcuts. Tap onto that and you can see we have a left shortcut and a right shortcut. So if you don't want your device controls here, you can change this to something else, like maybe the flashlight is really useful. And then on the right shortcut, we can add another one on the other side. And you can kind of go through here and just see what options we have. We can maybe add the mute button so we can quickly mute our phone in case we're in a meeting or at work and we don't want it making any sounds. And once you're done, just hit the back arrow and those shortcuts will be added to your lock screen. So if we go, to our lock screen, you can see we now have the flashlight, so we can quickly toggle that on directly from the lock screen. Now this is definitely really nice if you're walking around at night and you're looking for a late night snack. Instead of having to unlock your phone, you can just turn on that flashlight directly from there and now you're not gonna bump into any furniture. And of course the mute button on the other side right there. For this next one, we're gonna go back into our lock screen settings. So again, tap and hold on your lock screen, hit customize, unlock your phone and go down to the bottom where it says more lock screen options. And right here, click on now playing. And this is the feature that allows your phone to listen to any background music that's going on around you. So if you're at a store or in a car and you hear some cool song that you want to save for later, if you enable it, your phone will recognize those songs and display the name of the song playing on your lock screen and even allow you to come back in the future and check all of the history of all of the songs that it's played so that you can go ahead and download them using whatever music app that you have on your phone. I've actually gotten a lot of use out of this, but do keep in mind it is going to use a little bit more battery just because those microphones are always gonna be on listening to music. Next, what we're gonna do is give our phone a unique name. So by default, it's just called Pixel 9a or whatever the model is but you can change that name. And to do that, we're gonna go into our settings, go down to about phone. And you can see right there, it says device name. This is called Pixel 9a. But if there's other people in your family or group of friends who also have a Pixel 9a, sometimes when you're trying to connect a Bluetooth device or connect your phone 
to your car you're not really going to know whose device this is so what you can do is just maybe change this to your name this is alex's pixel 9a and now anytime i connect my phone to any devices it'll show up with my name on it and i know that this is my phone that's trying to connect. Next, what we're gonna do is enable the back tap feature. So there's a setting on your phone that allows you to take a certain action by tapping the back of the phone. So you can see if I double tap, what it's gonna do is take a screenshot. Now you can map this to a few different actions, but it's definitely a really useful feature. Now to access it and set it up, what you wanna do is go into your phone settings, scroll down to system, gestures and right there at the top you see quick tap to start actions now this is disabled by default so definitely go ahead and enable it and down here you can just see a list of the things that you can do so i set it to take a screenshot but you can select any of these other ones and if you want you can launch a specific app by hitting on this cog wheel right here and it'll give you a full list of all of the apps you have installed on your phone so you can go ahead and select whichever one you want and when you double tap it will go to that app on my galaxy phone i have this set up to open up my rewards cards so anytime I'm at a drive through or I need to quickly scan one of my cards, I can just quickly double tap the back of my phone to open up my rewards cards app. Next, what we're going to do is remap our power button to bring up our power options. So right now, when you long press on it, it's going to bring up Gemini and you can start, you know, interacting with Gemini, asking your phone to look things up or do math equations or whatever you want. And while this is extremely useful, Gemini is definitely a really good tool. I'm going to show you another way that you can still invoke Gemini, but still get those power cycling options from your power button. If you like the legacy functionality of the power button to bring up those power options. So what we're going to do first is go into our settings, scroll down to system, tap gestures and go down to press and hold power button. And you can see it's set to digital assistant, but we can change this to power menu so that now when we long press on our button, on our, on this power button, we can shut down or power cycle our phone. And now what we're going to do is bring back our assistant by going back to our phone's system settings and then go down to navigation mode. And if you're using gesture navigation, just hit on this cog wheel right here. And right there, it says swipe to invoke assistant. If you enable this, what you can do now is swipe from the bottom corners of your phone and it will invoke the assistant. So you can see if I do that, it brings up Gemini. So we still have easy and quick access to Gemini while having that power button uh, option to power cycle our phone. Now, the reason I like doing this, even though the power options menu is right here, I guess you don't really need to remap your power button, but there's a lot of really good Android applications out there that allow you to create extra actions from these buttons. So using an app, you can actually do a lot more useful things with the power button, like map it to a screenshot or to turn on the flashlight or launch a specific app. So even though the power option menu is easily accessible, I still like to remap Gemini to this swipe option here and leave this power button for the future if I download any apps and I want to create more useful shortcuts. Now, if you're somebody who uses a screen protector on your phone, you might have noticed that sometimes if you're a light tapper or you're just navigating around your phone, the phone can sometimes have a hard time picking up your taps or swipes if you just accidentally tap really lightly. And obviously that's going to happen because you have an extra layer on your screen. But there's a setting that you can uh, enable to help your phone identify your taps a little bit easier. So what we can what we can do is go into our settings, go back to display and touch. And if you swipe down to the bottom, you'll see it says touch sensitivity right here. If you go into here, you can enable screen protector mode and you can see what it says is increases touch sensitivity and improve touch while using a screen protector. So again, if you're using a screen protector and you find that sometimes it's a little bit annoying that your phone isn't recognizing your taps, just enable this feature and it's not going to have any more issues. All right, guys, the next thing we're going to do is improve the camera quality of our phone. So if we launch our camera by double tapping the power button, and then we go to the video section and hit on the settings right there. You can see that by default, our phone's resolution for video is 1080p, which is definitely not the best. So if you want higher resolution and to shoot better video, just switch this to 4K. And now you're going to be shooting 4K video out of your phone. And it is, it is going to save these settings. So even if you exit the camera application and then you go back in, if we go to the video settings again, you can see it retains that 4K. So you can just set it and forget it and know that every time you're filming a video on your phone, you're getting the highest resolution possible. Now, the Google phones have a really amazing feature that I absolutely love, and it is on by default. So you don't need to enable it. It's already going to be working. But I just want you to be aware that this exists and how it works. And it's called at a glance. Now, what you want to do is just long press on your home screen, go to uh, home settings and you'll see right there at a glance, it should be on. If yours is off for whatever reason, definitely turn it on. This is definitely a really great feature. 
But to show you exactly what it does, we can hit on this settings right here. And if you swipe down, you'll see that there's a whole bunch of things that are enabled here. So we have weather, air quality, weather alerts, earthquake alerts, any upcoming events from your calendar, your work profiles, you have your commute. So if you set your home and work address from your phone, it will show you the commute time every day in the morning. And that's definitely really useful. So you know if there's traffic and you need to hurry up or if you're gonna be fine. It can even recognize when the doorbell rings. So if you're vacuuming or you're wearing headphones and you're listening to music and you don't hear the doorbell, your phone will listen for that itself and notify you that your doorbell rang. And to kind of just show you how it works, you can see the last one here is flashlight. So your phone can just notify you that your flashlight is on. So if we actually turn our flashlight on, let's go into our quick settings here turn on our flashlight and let's say our phone is laying down flat like this and I can't actually tell that my flashlight is on. You can see that at a glance right there is actually going to notify me that my flashlight is on. So even though I can't see it, obviously because it's laying down, if I'm working and I just look over at my screen, it'll show me those notifications up here and I can just tap on here and it'll turn it off. And you can see it just does it for me. I don't need to go into my settings. It just turns off the flash rate for me. And again, all the weather alerts, your commute, your travel plans, your calendar events, everything will just show up here in this at a glance section and just help you stay on top of everything that you need. All right, next what we're gonna do is go into our phone app, hit on the three dots up here, go to settings and we're going to go to caller ID and spam. And you can see we have two options here, see caller, and spam ID and filter spam calls. You're definitely gonna wanna enable this if you get a lot of spam calls and you just want Google to filter those out. They have a database of like known spam phone numbers and if they recognize those phone numbers are calling you, it's just going to filter it out so that those phone calls don't even come through to your phone and don't bother you. So definitely a really useful feature, especially if you're often getting spam calls, which is definitely a huge issue these days. So if you don't wanna deal with those, just enable this feature and Google will filter out most of those numbers for you. Another really cool feature in the call settings is if you go back to the settings and then go down to the bottom here under advanced, you can see we have an option that says caller ID announcement. And you see by default, it's set to never, but what we can do is hit always. And now what it's going to do is announce the name of the person who's calling you. And this is definitely really useful so that you know who's calling you and you know if you need to maybe go answer the phone or if that phone call can wait and you'll get back to them later. Definitely just a nice little quality of life improvement. So definitely go ahead and enable this. All right, guys. Now, the last thing we're going to do is go into our phone settings, go to sound and vibration, and then scroll down until you see clear calling right there. And we're going to enable clear calling. And what this is going to do is if you're on a phone call and maybe you're walking around outside and there's cars driving by or there's some construction work going on around you, your phone will automatically recognize those sounds and suppress them, bring those levels down and make it easier to hear your voice. So whoever is talking to you, they're not gonna have any trouble hearing your voice over any of that background noise. Definitely a really nice feature. But there you go, guys. That's gonna do it for this video about all the things that you need to do first on your brand new Google Pixel 9a. Let me know in the comments below if there's any other settings or features that you think we should know about. But that's gonna do it for now. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.